Right guys, Dan Hendrickson here at Torquay Golf Club. Thought I'd do a little video for you today about me and my pitching, my wedge play. In recent time, it's been really quite poor. My um, wedge game has got a little bit ropey on over a bit of time, you know? That approach you played there, Bernie, it was very good. Not so good. Don't need that one done. Can't get this club to square up. Just cannot get the hands to work today. That way. It needs a lesson with myself, a video lesson. So I, I would say post post lockdown your um pitching, which I would also regard as one of your strengths along with your driving, hasn't been up to the same standard that you're typically used to or what we're used to seeing? No, and absolutely right what you say there, Lester, and we've just seen it from those videos that I've just been showing you there of some of the pitching and chipping that I've been doing when I've been out on touring around doing our course vlogs. I've really been struggling with it. And it's something I went through some time ago where I would really struggle to get a decent contact on the ball. So I would catch a few a little bit thin, a little bit heavy. My distance control was poor, but I always leak it out to the right hand side. And I put this down to what I feel is a little bit of loss of connectivity to my body. So my arms get a little bit all over the place when I'm trying to, to pitch or chip the ball. And what happens is I, st I tend to start to sway off the ball. So as, I'm, as I take the club away, my body just starts to have a little sway to it, to the right hand side. Instead of kind of keeping my arms connected, I'm feeling more of a rotation with the actual body itself. So a few weeks ago, I put the tall rotation stick on some of my wedges just to have a little practice and a play with. It was something that I struggled with. When I got back from France, I realized that I'd kind of, I'd hit onto something on the range when we were over there. I'd kind of found a feeling that kind of worked and I started to pitch the ball really quite nicely. If you'd have, if you'd have watched the first one at Val Quivat, I had certainly coming up the last couple of holes, I really started to pitch the ball quite nicely and got it up and down for birdies on a couple of those situations. If you remember. <laughs> Unfortunately I do. He's had these dialed in from this range on the last couple of holes. Uh, a good shot as well, a little bit to our left. But working up there, great shot. Five foot left for birdie. The one on 16 was particularly good. Yeah. Um, that actually hit the hole, didn't it? Got a 30 yard shot. Expect this to be pretty close. He's pretty good at these. Yeah, it's a very good shot. Sin, sin. Oh! Lipped out. And when I was on the range at Val Quivet, literally we come out of the car or got off the ferry, got onto the car, out at Val Quivet. I started hitting a few shots because we were waiting for our tea time. And what I did is I started to feel like I kept my arms a little bit more connected to my body. And what I mean is like my inside of my elbows connected to my sort of side part of my body here. And then all I felt like I was doing was feeling like I keep this all under control here so there's no real wrist break as I come through. But all I felt like I did is rotated my shoulders and hips so I just turned back and turned through, keeping it connected. So the bigger muscles are controlling the smaller ones? Correct. The bigger muscles are now in control of it rather than me feeling like my arms and my hands are doing all the work. So when I got back, I put the tour rotation stick on the end of my wedge just to take it out to this area here, the short game area, just to do a little bit of practice with it and feel as though I wasn't getting too flicky with it so I could feel that this stick was kind of keeping to my left hand side of my body. Now you don't have to have a tour rotation stick, you could just use a general tour stick and hold on to it. I think the tour rotation stick quite, works quite well because obviously it stays connected, it's not flapping around in your hand and it just feels like you can play a normal shot with it. So once I get set up, you can see that that tour rotation stick kind of sticks, sticks against the left hand side of my body here and all I'm going to feel like I said what I did in France was keeping my elbows connected and I'm going to feel like I'm literally turning my shoulders and turning my hips as I come through the shot. Now, for me, what I used to do was I would, well, I say I used to do, I kind of can still do it, 
is as I came through the shot, my arms would get a little bit disconnected for me and then I would kind of feel like I would flick the club through underneath me to try and almost save the shot, almost save the face as it came through. And if you see some of my shots that I'll put a video on, you'll see the club as it works up through from this position here, you'll see my hands kind of flip over as the face kind of wants to rotate as we come through the shot. With this stick, and again a tall stick will work for you, but with this stick, because it's so jammed against my body, it won't let my hands kind of go because it will start to flick into my body. It makes me turn my body through the shot, which, if you remember, I was leaking a lot of my shots out to the right. Now, as I turn my body through the shot, it naturally helps me to rotate that club face into a more, you know, centered position. And therefore, when I get that contact on the ball, the ball flies towards the target. So not only will it by doing that move will improve your angle of attack but it'll also help your centerness of strike. And you're spot on Lester because what's happening if you think about it when I was swaying off the ball my sternum position my center point which is what I want to try and work around it was moving with me so my, my strike position if I didn't time it perfectly coming back my strike position would start to come a little bit behind the ball and then I would actually catch it a little bit heavy or I would then start to rise up to try and save the shot and then catch it a little bit thin. So my centerness of strike is improving because I'm staying centered over the ball, but also my angle of attack is improving because I'm that much further forward, does that make sense? So trying to keep yeah. myself in a more centered forward position of the ball. So I hit then ball, then divot as I come through. And as far as I see it, if you're moving that center point, you know, swaying it over left and right. If you're playing a lot of golf and practicing, then you can get away with it. But if you're not, which we, we don't have the time necessarily to come down here and spend two, three hours a day chipping, then that is, you know, your consistency is gonna be all over the place and your strike's gonna be all over the face. Again, I tell this to a lot of the people that I coach is, there's nothing wrong with having a fault. A fault is, you know, our golf games are built on faults in some ways. You know, we all do something that's kind of like a bit of DNA for us but it's how you manage that fault. And for me, because I'm not practicing a lot of golf at this moment in time with, with my career and everything that's going on with that, you can call it a career. You've got a career, yeah. Is it a career? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have a great deal of time to practice. Therefore, if I was practicing a lot, I could probably time that and I have timed it for years and years and years gone by. But now that I don't have that time to practice, I need to change my technique to help me improve the things that we're talking about today. So what was really interesting is that first day in France where we had time just before we teed off to go to the range and ha hit a bucket of balls, I found a groove. I found something that worked for me and it worked for me that day and I played some of probably the best pitch shots that I've played in some time. The problem is, as the trip carried on, so we played two more rounds, that pitching started to fall down again. Like you said, the first round was your pitching and chipping was, was really, really tight and really tidy, um, and it gradually, it gradually got worse. So on that first day when I found a technique that kind of worked for me, it was then I needed to come back here to Torquay, to my practice area, and start really sort of repeating that action over and over again so it becomes sort of permanent within me, so I get a feel for it that I know works. How good a strike is that? <laughs> that is as good as, as good as, an, it's a bit, Funky, but it's <laughs> such a good... You could have your eye out. I could have my eye out. Is a little disclaimer when you use it? Yeah. Like they're all going absolutely straight down the line, aren't they? And the, the sound, the actual sound of the strike is so crisp. Yeah. Whereas yeah, and it was, it's the it same was, spot every time. Like was, where I'm hitting it, it's ball divot. It was more fuddy divot. before and yeah. your, your, your um, size and depth of divot varied so much. Yeah, absolutely right. 
If they've all landed almost the same spot. Yeah, you could literally chuck a blanket over where they'd landed there. Yeah. Now don't get me wrong, I can still feel this hitting me on the side. You know, if I continue to practice there, I'd get a little bit of a bruise as I worked way through it. But I can feel that hitting me, which is fine. It's absolutely fine. It just gives me that sort of reassurance that I'm not quite getting it right and therefore I need to rotate a little bit more. It's just instant feedback from when I'm hitting shots. So for me now, I mean, we're coming up to now the winter time here in the UK. We're moving into the end of September, beginning of October. This is when my practice and my, my competitive golf starts. So for me, this is an area of my game, which is the scoring zone, which I know needs to improve. So I'm gonna spend a bit of time just trying to drill this into my game. Pretty good. So there you go, there's a little insight into what's happening in my game. We all go through these struggles. There's no point in getting down on yourself about it. You've just got to get yourself back out onto the practice ground, go and see your PGA Pro, figure out what it is that's going to help you with your game, and hopefully you can prove it over the winter time. Let me know, put your comments down below. Is it something you've kind of gone through yourself? Is that drill something that might have helped your game? I'd like to hear what you have to say. Don't forget, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up if you like what you're seeing, and as always, stay safe, and we'll catch up with you again soon.